Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, on Hollow Earth Radio. It is now April 27th, 2017, and I'm actually in a really, really good mood, and I'm partly recording this to document the mood that I'm in. I have been in a horrible, stressed out mood lately, and I recently started taking Wellbutrin. I took this off and on years ago, and it helped me. It increases the dopamine in your system. And I, as opposed to other antidepressants, which increase the dopamine or the norepinephrine or whatever it's called, dopamine seems to be what I need. So I think it's already helping me. I'm generally very skeptical of medications, generally prefer to do things in a more natural way. I also take an herb called ashwagandha. And that is supposed to be good for anxiety, depression, good for your thyroid, good for many different things. So I'm still taking that, but I take it several hours after I take my Wellbutrin in the morning, and I'm still needing to make sure that I can mix those two, but so far so good. Going to get my blood tested soon to see if my thyroid is okay and my vitamin D levels are okay. And seeing a psychiatrist about the medication and a psychologist. And I worked all day today with medical students. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about that when I have some more energy. I think I actually need some rest right now. I'm going to play a few tracks of how I've been feeling lately. And some poetry and some music. So thanks for tuning in. This is... Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring podcast. I think it's number 28. Let me see. Yes, podcast number 28, April 27th, 2017. Thanks for tuning in. Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring in Seattle. And I'm happy to say that I had a good day. I rode my bike uh, to my modeling job and back. And got some farm fresh eggs at Pike Place Market, uh, laid by chickens that get to run around in a pasture and be happy and healthy. Uh, it was $7 for the dozen, but it's worth it. Um, I also got some $5 for a dozen on Whidbey Island in a small farm. Uh, the, and the eggs taste so good when they're from happy chickens that run around in a pasture. And tomorrow I do an early morning modeling job, 7.30 a.m., uh, so I'm resting. And I think the Wellbutrin is kicking in, and I still take ashwagandha along with Wellbutrin separately and stop taking Buspar and also got just some nice endorphins from my bike ride today. So trying to get my brain chemistry you know, better in natural ways in addition to using the Wellbutrin, also taking the ashwagandha herb and uh, maybe more vigorous exercise is what I need because I tend to go for a walk every day like 60 minutes, but it's not always super vigorous in terms of my heart rate. And I noticed today when I rode my bicycle, my heart rate really got up way more than when I go for my brisk walks. So I think I need to start jogging to really get my heart rate up or bike riding is actually more um, endorphin producing for me than just walking briskly um, okay so good night just wanted to say that hey this is Shannon Kringen goddess Kring in Seattle and I'm actually having a really good time I um, think my mood is improving and I don't know if this is because of the Wellbutrin I also take ashwagandha, which is an herb, but and I'm also exercising more. Uh, I still have kind of trouble sleeping. I definitely sleep, you know, eight or nine hours a night in my bed, but I'm not asleep the whole time. So I'm still going to need to figure out how to get myself to sleep better. Um, but I do, I'm really, really happy and grateful that I, I'm going to get my blood tested tomorrow morning and make sure my thyroid is okay and get a CBC panel, um, get my thyroid and my liver and my kidneys and my vitamin D level and my lipids or whatever they call them, my white blood cells and my red blood cells and just make sure my blood is healthy. 
And then depending on how that result is, you know, work on uh, improving my health. Uh, I'm very actually really physically healthy usually. It's emotionally that I have challenges, uh, moods, depression, anxiety, uh, post-traumatic stress, tendencies, you know, just uh, lots of... Um, trauma in my early life and um, relationships that have been very unstable. So I have a lot of things to work on, but I'm really happy and grateful I get to work with medical students all day today. They pay us really well. I'm a full-time freelance art and medical model, which means I help medical students learn and I help art students learn by being a model for them as a patient with medical students and as a person to draw for the art students and paint and sculpt and photograph. So I'm really, really happy and grateful for my jobs as a freelancer and happy that I'm um, uh, dating somebody who is very different than me and in some ways we're not compatible in terms of like being each other's like full-time spouse type partners but then again I feel like we're good friends and we're partners in a way and we've got a romantic spark and a sexual attraction and um, it's been two and a half years and I'm not sure where that's going but I'm really grateful that he's in my life and I love him and he loves me and I love my parents and I guess I'm just feeling a sense of relief right now because I was feeling really stressed out and depressed and anxious and I'm feeling better and I have an appointment with um, you know a blood test tomorrow and then I've got my psychologist and my psychiatrist and I might see a chiropractor because I'm having neck and shoulder pain and so I'm really happy that I'm taking care of my health and my cat is doing well um, on his raw meat diet that I get at the health food pet store and I'm still taking the diatomaceous earth, which is a mineral supplement, food grade diatomaceous earth, which is full of minerals and good for many things about your health. Um, and I'm watching little birds right now out my window, cute little birdies. And now I'm going to go work with the medical students again, just on a little break. So just keeping track of my moods. And if anybody's listening, thank you. And if nobody's listening, that's okay, because I'm here for me. And I'm valid, and I record these for myself as much as I do for other people. So have a great day, everyone listening. Okay, peace and love. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Shining Kringen, Goddess Kring, near Seattle, and I am walking by the water. I just modeled for a bunch of naturopathic medical students, and I feel grateful for the work that I do. I'm kind of, I've done it for 20 years. I've um, done art modeling for 25 years since the early 90s, 1992, I think. And I've done uh, medical modeling for 20 years, since 97. And that is when they practice doing gynecological pelvic exams and breast exams on us. They also hire men for prostate exams to practice um, palpation, a physical technique, as well as verbal technique and eye contact and caring for patients. And I've learned a lot about my body since doing this work. And I just really enjoy working with medical students students are very smart, sensitive, intelligent people and who care and want to help make the world a better place through medicine. And um, I'm just fascinated by how different every student is. Like, I guess I'm kind of an energy reader. And so when people examine me medically, I feel like I'm intrigued by how I feel different vibrations from different people in terms of how they touch me, um, you know, in a professional medical way. I'm not trying to sound weird or anything, but just everyone's energy is different in their tone of voice and the way they smell and just how they do their medicine, how they practice medicine with me. So it's interesting and it kind of fascinates me and I'm happy that I can get paid well to do something that I believe in and I care about and and it helps educate myself and the people. You know, I always feel like I learn something when I do it. Because in some ways I'm kind of shy and introverted. And I get overwhelmed um, by certain situations. And yet for some reason I'm very comfortable working with medical students and art students as a model. And comfortable doing my podcast and recording my voice and doing my art. And hanging out with my cat. So don't like to go to parties or do certain social things. And I'm just sort of acknowledging that and making peace with it as a 48-year-old, uh, learning to love and accept myself and build on my strengths 
and try to stop picking on myself about my flaws. That would be a really good healing thing to do. So just wanted to share that.
crunching toast crunching with the legist ghost, the ghost, a prey appearance in tongue sharpener. Positivity pays off in instant karma for squeaked coming soon. Dreadnought, dreadnought, smoogy and tidbits of doom. Plug in snorks with mole peen paw slip. Yummy honey dripping, dripping. Yummy honey dripping, dripping. Yummy honey dripping, dripping. Erase, erase. The former melon has been erased. So don't even look for that. So don't even look for that. It has been erased. And I will be gone. And I will be gone. From melon dome. Can drink. Can spit. Can go. Can stop. Can stop. Can run. Can hide. Can Can you make can look? Can make you see. Car broken. Sneasel core. Crumple pumpkin. An avatarded, avatarded, snub knocker, bunky sphere. Don't touch the rhombus. Steadfast, headlong, strong. Prayer song. Shine light in ocean gong. Rise up and remain. Rise up and remain. Rise up and remain. Hey, this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle on Hollow Earth Radio, and what you just heard was Six Minutes of Kring, a conglomeration of interesting musical experiments that I created. And I wanted to share how I'm doing today. I'm actually a little bit too busy as usual. I have a habit of overbooking myself. Here we go. Hey, this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle, and I just went for a 53-minute walk brisk walk through my neighborhood up and down some cool hills and some trails in the woods and I feel pretty good. I'm getting ready for a art model gig figure nude and then tomorrow I work with medical students pretend to be a patient and they examine me and I give them feedback on their technique and then tomorrow evening I get to model for a thing called drink and draw in Seattle at Capital Cider from 7 to 8 30 p.m. tomorrow night so I'm excited in costume can't be nude because it's a bar and I feel pretty good although I am concerned I wonder if I if a mood stabilizing medication would help me but right now I'm on Wellbutrin which is an antidepressant and today I saw naturopathic doctors and they said that ashwagandha is fine with Wellbutrin so I take Wellbutrin in the morning ashwagandha in the afternoon and then at night I might start taking magnesium again to help me sleep and also meditate more and I'm getting a full blood panel tomorrow morning I have to fast for 12 hours before so I'm going to get up really early tomorrow morning and get my full blood panel done vitamin D thyroid levels um lipids i don't know what lipids are but red blood cell you know all the different uh, cbc full blood panel whatever that's called my psychiatrist recommended that just to make sure my blood's okay in the past i've had low vitamin d levels and my thyroid used to be underactive i guess they call that hypothyroid as opposed to hyperthyroid which means your 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 thyroid is too active mine used to be underactive but three years ago i quit eating wheat And my thyroid, uh, they put me on medication and then I went off of it. So I'm recording this just to say that I'm in a fairly good mood right now. Although in the back of my mind, I'm wondering if what I really need is a mood stabilizing drug like Lamictal. But I'm afraid to take that. I'm going to talk to the psychiatrist again about that. She doesn't seem to think that I'm bipolar in any way. She thinks I'm just having anxiety and depression. And that most of that is because I had some trauma in my childhood. And perhaps I got in the habit of having a lot of fear and worry and sadness and grief and maybe I just haven't fully worked through that yet but I'm not really sure so how much of it is chemical out of my control and how much of it is although monks that meditate a lot change their brain chemistry so the thing is there's different ways to change your brain chemistry everything you eat changes your chemistry whether you take vitamins or medication It changes your chemistry if you smoke or drink, if you have sex, if you listen to music, if you go for a walk. I mean, pretty much everything, even the thoughts that you choose to think, changes your brain chemistry. So 
I know, though, when I take Wilbutrin, it increases dopamine, and it's harder for me to think negative, horrible thoughts when I'm on Wilbutrin. But I also know that I am supposedly in charge of choosing my thoughts. Um, so basically, I'm just sharing all of this to let you know how I'm doing. If anyone's listening, thank you so much. And if nobody's listening, I am here for you, Shannon. You are here for yourself, and that's the most important thing, to validate that. I love you. And peace and love to everyone if anyone's listening. And if not, that's okay because, Shannon, I love you too. So there it is. So have a great day or night, everyone. Funky schmunky monkey. Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio. Every Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. I also archive this 24-7 on my YouTube channel. And I feature slideshows of my artwork so you can be visually entertained as you listen to my podcast on Shannon Kringen YouTube channel. You can also go to my Patreon or my Mixcloud or my Bandcamp. Although I have to say Bandcamp for some reason only has the first 23 podcasts. This is podcast number 28. It is now April 27th, 2017. So this is number 28. And Mixcloud seems to be uploading all of them. For some reason, every time I try to upload to Bandcamp, it just won't. um, Ever since episode 23, I haven't been able to add any new episodes and it just keeps failing to upload. So basically, you can listen to this anytime you want 24-7 for free on Patreon, YouTube, and Mixcloud. And then Bandcamp, again, only the first 23 episodes. Forgive me for repeating myself. I'm very OCD. Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. I think I am feeling a little bit hyper in a way that I don't entirely like. I think this is the effect of Wellbutrin. It's helped me in the past. I think I just have extra, extra dopamine in my system and I'm getting ready to go model and then for an art class, and then I'm going to cook dinner for my boyfriend, and then Friday night, I decided to cook dinner for my dad. I make my own homemade pad thai. And what else? I am just really feeling like I want to relax and take it easy, but I feel really hyped up right now. So either this is a mood swing, hypomania or be, but the thing is I when I'm when I'm manic when I'm so-called manic I don't feel like perfectly amazing like I can stay up all night and fly to Paris and spend a whole bunch of money on things I don't really need so I don't do like a bunch of crazy stuff like that grandiose type things when I'm feeling happy or high but I just do feel kind of uncomfortable and like my thoughts are racing a little faster than normal and I feel a little hyper and a little out of control and a little bit chaotic, like extra chaotic. Um, and when I'm depressed, I never stay in bed all day. So basically, I thought I was maybe cyclothymic, but the psychiatrist doesn't seem to think so. I think she might actually be wrong. Uh, and I maybe Lamictal would help me or Lamictal. It's just that there's this skin rash you can get that's very dangerous. And so you don't want to get that skin rash if you take Lamictal or Lamictal. I've never taken a mood stabilizing drug before. Uh, I think that I'll never know how it'll affect me unless I take it. It seems to me that if I took Lamictal and I felt a lot better and more stable and balanced, maybe that proves that I'm bipolar on some level. Uh, And if I took Lamictal and had allergic reaction, obviously I'd have to stop taking it. Or if it didn't do anything at all for me, then I would not take it. Right now I'm taking Wellbutrin, which increases dopamine for depression. And I am also taking Ashwagandha, which is an Ayurvedic herb from India, which is supposed to be good for your immune system, your thyroid, anxiety and depression so and as well as other things like it has lots of health benefits look it up ashwagandha email me if you want to know how to spell that so how am i feeling i feel a little hyper i feel like a little bit in a rush because i have to go oh yes i am going to figure model actually this is airing on april 27th 2017 tonight April 27th, 2017 in Seattle, me, Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring is going to model 
for the Drink and Draw. It's free to free to go, free cover, no cover, at Drink and Draw on Capital Cider on Capitol Hill, which is on the corner of Broadway and Pike, I think. Capital Cider, just look it up. Capitol Hill, Seattle, Capital Cider. 7 to 8 30 p.m. I will be there modeling in a costume and on a stage with really cool candlelight. It's a fun event. People bring their sketch pads if they have them. And if you don't, there's free art supplies provided. And it's kind of run by Gage Academy of Art and I think Artist Supply Craftsman or something like that, art supply store here in Seattle. And it's free cover, 7 to 8.30 p.m. And it's uh, if you don't have your own art supplies, like I already said, you can bring nothing, just yourself. <laughs> and then I think there's live music. I think the thing, it's called Drink and Draw. I think it happens once or twice a month usually on a Thursday night. Maybe it's the last Thursday of every month. I'm really not sure. Um, but it is 7 to 10. I think from 7 to 8.30 is a live model, me, in costume, and you can draw. And then from 8.30 to 10, I think there's live music. And so you can always, you know, draw the musicians on stage and listen to them. So I'm excited to do that. I get hired for that every once in a while. And I was going to say, I model for medical students as well. I've been doing that for 20 years, since 1997. And what that entails is there's two main kinds of medical modeling. One is called standardized patient. And that, that means that they hand you a script. And you sort of try to memorize like your age, and your name and your sex and you have it's based on real medical cases of people that have physical problems and the medical students need to practice diagnosing and treating people and so I go in there and I pretend like I have a certain diet and I smoke or drink or have family history of something and like I have a pain in my throat or my stomach or I have headaches or you know I might have a psychological issue and I basically act it out and answer questions that the medical students ask me. And then they have to guess, uh, come up with, I think, three diagnoses, 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 is that how you say that? I don't know how to say that word. They have to come up with three possible things that might be wrong with me. And then I think they have to also come up with three possible ways in, in which to treat me, which could be through surgery, medication, uh, lifestyle change, diet change, exercise, you know, various different things they could tell me that I could do to improve my health and or take a medication or get surgery. So they have to guess what's wrong and diagnose. And that's called standardized patient modeling. And then there's another kind, which is basically more physical, which is, uh, I guess it's just physical patient modeling for medical students. And that is when you actually let them do take your blood pressure, check your eyes, ears, nose, throat, um, take check your pulse, you know, get, check all of your vital signs, basically. And they don't actually take blood samples. And they also do breast exams and pelvic gynecological exams, but they don't actually do pap smears on us. They just pretend they don't actually want to, because that would be harmful if they did several pap smears on a woman. So what they do is they pretend and they do everything except take a sample, which would hurt us. So they just sort of pretend with the instruments to do the full exam. And then they hire men for prostate exams. And I'm pretty sure that they do the full exam on the male unless it, unless there's anything that would hurt the male. So then they would just, you know, pretend to do that part. So they basically do that in order to practice their physical palpation skills. And they also practice that to uh, to practice their verbal skills so they know how to make eye contact with the patient and not be too nervous and be professional but not too personal but not too clinical you know they need to find the balance of being medical but friendly and caring but not too personal so so it keeps it like a professional relationship so that's kind of an interesting thing that I've been doing for 20 years and I have learned a lot about my body 
and I'm kind of fascinated by how different each student is. As I said earlier in this recording, I'm kind of an energy reader and I get to make a lot of eye contact with these different medical students and basically I practice my verbal skills right along with the medical students that are practicing their skills. And so I feel like I learn a lot from doing that and I'm very, very grateful. I tend to kind of have a lot of social phobias, although I will say that I went for a walk the other day and I wanna read what I pulled. I pulled, um, sometimes when I go for walks by myself, you know, my, my psychiatrist, okay, let me just channel off here a little bit on a tangent. My psychiatrist said, well, do you isolate? And I feel kind of defensive when someone asks me if I isolate because I'm still trying to figure out, I'm kind of an introverted and I'm not real comfortable socially, meaning I don't actually want to socialize as much as more extroverted people. But I'm always wondering how much of that is a wound and how much of that is just my nature. Because, you know, our society here in the United States tends to judge people for being introverts and seems to think that being an extrovert is more normal and being an introvert is kind of weird. And I've always been more introverted, although I am recording a podcast right now and putting it on public websites. So I guess I like to share in this way, but I am sitting by myself in my apartment. Kisun, kitty, kitty. My cat is scratching at the window. Okay. So I went for a walk. There's a, actually, there's a book called Introvert Power. I think I'm going to tell my psychologist and psychiatrist about this. And it's about the power of being an introvert and how it's actually a positive thing. Basically, the most important thing is that if you're an introvert or an extrovert or somewhere in between, that you embrace who you really are and don't let people shame you for being introverted or extroverted or anywhere on the spectrum of that. Uh, and basically figure out who you really are and then live your life based on what you want. So I know part of my stress is I am dating a guy actually who's a lot more extroverted than me, and I think I was pushing myself to do more social things with him than I actually wanted to because I wanted to please him. So I realized part of my irritability and stressed outness is because I'm trying to make myself be more extroverted, and I need more time to myself. And so I went for a walk the other day and I saw a snail and I took some really cute photos of a snail. If you just go to shannonkringen.com and click on my live journal link, there's some cute photos that you can see of the snail. I think it's on my Flickr too and, and on my Twitter and my Instagram. But this is uh, the, the medicine. I usually, when I have an encounter with an animal or a plant, I look up and see what kind of symbolism there is associated with that animal. And it's kind of like my tarot card for the day. So I saw this pretty snail, took a few photos of it. And it says, snail is letting you know that you need to slow down. What's the big hurry? You have been spending so much time focusing on your goals, but you've been missing something that is right in front of you. Let go for a minute and you'll be able to see it. Alternatively, the mollusk is letting you know that any place is a, oh, any pace. Let me just make sure this is working. Yes, it is. Any pace is a good pace. And sometimes what seems like forever is just a small moment of time. Release your beliefs of not getting things done on time. Trust your process and simply stay present and chug along. No sense in causing yourself any more stress. Snail is also letting you know that your time needs to be used wisely. However, you also have to realize that you have time for everything. Divide your priorities and set up a block of time in each day so that there is steady progress on your projects. The whole process is a simple exercise in time management. Stay in the present and all things will be accomplished. And then it goes on to say, if snail is your animal totem, you tend to be a creature of habit. You have a great deal of patience. This is true of me. You know how to take things as they come. Sometimes true. More often than not, you prefer to be alone. You are not very social and sometimes very timid as well. 
You are constantly having to, this is very true of me, actually. I am, I don't enjoy being very social. I find it stressful and I like to be alone. In fact, some of the best times I've had are when I'm by myself, like with my cat or going for a walk or listening to music, doing my artwork, recording my voice. I tend to really like the feeling of having space to myself. So let me check the time on this. Yes, okay, everything's great. So creature of habit, constantly having to balance protection with trust, not easy, and often never show your true self to the world. Your feelings are generally at the forefront of most of your decisions and actions. A person with this totem also needs to be careful about hiding in their shell. They need to make a point of dealing with their emotional issues or they could withdraw permanently. Yes, I think this is true. You have a strong worth ethic work ethic and will often put in much longer hours than everyone else. This is true. I love to work. I thrive on work. However, you do tend to work very slowly and medit meditatively. Everything you do is very well done and maintains a high standard of excellence. You have a tendency to rely on yourself to get the job done. Now that's very true. My job as an art model and a medical model, and also I deliver groceries every once in a while, all of those jobs kind of require that I kind of work on my own in terms of I kind of, when I model, I sometimes have to time myself and I make up the poses and I'm sort of in my own little world. And when I deliver groceries, I'm mostly on my own. And medical modeling is something that nobody can really teach you how to do it. You have to just learn as you go. And I just feel like a, a, a strong sense of purpose when I do it. And I'm very comfortable with the medical students. And I feel like I come out of my shell. That's what it is. I feel like I'm kind of a, a shy, snail-like person who doesn't want to come out of her shell very often. And when I model and do these podcasts, and when I'm in the Fremont Summer Solstice Parade and the World Naked Bike Ride, I kind of come out of my shell. When I'm body painted, you know, I paint my body, and I, I do various things like that that are like creative and artistic, and I've done performances, and I used to do my public access show for 15 years on, on TV called Goddess Kring. I danced around nude. I did monologues. I used to dance with the Lusty Lady in my early 20s, you know, in, in the early 1990s. So basically, I've done sort of things that seem very extroverted, but those are ways in which I like to come out of my shell. And then in my social life, I'm not particularly social. I do belong to a creative writing group, and I enjoy uh, sitting and writing with them, and then we read our stuff out loud. But then we each go on our separate ways. Um, and actually, a lot of people in my creative writing group, there's a, just a few of us, we're all kind of like that. We're all kind of a little bit introverted and we like to do our own thing and we write and then we share and we like our solitude. I think all, all of us live alone. I live alone with my cat. I have a boyfriend that I see a few times a week, but I generally like my space. So it says I have a strong worth e ethic uh, and it says people with this mollusk with this mollusk, basically a snail, as their totem are very deliberate people. Once they set a goal to achieve, there's nothing diverting them from their path. If snail has come into your dream, if you see a snail in your dreams, it means you're feeling vulnerable and slow with some aspect of your waking life. It could also be a message that you are isolating yourself too much from the rest of the world. Growth can only come about by exposing those parts of yourself that are vulnerable so that you can embrace the lessons offered with it. If snail is in your dreams, it can also symbolize the need for patience and perseverance because there's a project that you are working on that seems to be taking a long time to complete and reach its goal. The snail in your dream is letting you know that all things can be accomplished as a result. Everything will arrive at the exact moment it is supposed to arrive. If snail is in your dream, it could be moving forward it's a symbolic uh, okay if a snail is in your dream and it's moving forward it's symbolic of slow but steady progress in your waking life towards your goals to see a snail that is hiding in its shell is an indication that you are using an avoidance tactic on an unpleasant task for some reason there is something that you know you have to deal with that you are currently avoiding in your waking life actually i think that's true I think there are t there are aspects of my relationship life, my love life, and my childhood issues that I haven't fully resolved or processed or felt or grieved. 
and I have a tendency to be a little passive aggressive and I, I kind of feel ashamed of my needs and desires. And also, also, I sometimes don't feel clear on what I need and desire. And so it's hard for me in a relationship to ask for what I want or need for two reasons. One, because of aspects of my childhood, I feel ashamed of having needs and wants. And two, I feel confused about who I really am and what I really want or need because I got used to as a child pretending like I didn't need anything or didn't need very much and I was afraid to ask for help. So basically I have some habits to break and I have some grief to face and some fears to overcome and maybe some of the anger that I think I have might just be chemicals in my brain but it might also be that I suppress myself and then I express myself so it's kind of a passive aggressive out of balance thing that I've learned. So I think there are some things I like to say avoid dance, voiding, you know, avoid, avoiding dance, a, avoid dance, avoidance, avoid dance, a dance in the void. So the dream of a red snail symbolizes that you have repressed anger and are in essence doing a slow burn. You need to find ways to release this anger or, or it will affect your health. I definitely feel like I have repressed anger and it does come out. I, I'm happy that I do express my anger, but I feel like I don't always directly express it in the moment when I'm having a situation that upsets me or stresses me out. You know, I'm very, very polite and considerate to other people, but sometimes I kind of uh, sacrifice my own needs to please others and I, I overwork sometimes and this causes some anger in me, I think, that comes out later on. So I need to learn to take better care of myself in the present moment. Dreaming of a white snail means that you are slowly being guided towards your life's purpose. And then it says snail trail. Seeing a snail's trail in your dreams is symbolic of spending too much time in your past and that there's no sense of casting blame behind you. Let go and pay more attention to what is in the present. To see many snail trails in your dreams mean that you are means you are focusing far too much on other people's stuff. You need to regroup and come back to yourself. You are the only one you have influence over. So basically, that's the animal totem medicine thingy Mick Jagger that I read on a, on a website, I think an animal spirit website. Thank you, whoever wrote that. Thank you so much, the animal spirit website. Uh, I love what I'm reading there. I resonate and relate to a lot of the snail. In fact, when I'm uh, snail symbolism, a lot of times when I'm upset, I do feel like a snail that has no shell. So I need to find the balance of coming out of my shell versus staying in my shell. I would really like to figure that out. How much do I want to come out and face my fears and, and, and push myself past my comfort zone? And how much do I want to allow myself the comfort of being in my shell and honoring my desire for solitude, for quiet, for time away from other humans? I, I enjoy plants and animals sometimes more than I enjoy humans. Although I have to admit when I'm around humans and animals, it calms me down. I do volunteer at the zoo and I love the goats and I love the smell of the different animals. You know that I know that sounds a little strange, but when I'm around the pigs and the chickens and the goats and the horses and there used to be elephants, I love the smell of the animals. There's this one animal at the zoo that kind of looks like a fox, but it's some kind of a wolf. It's like a wolf fox. I forgot what it's called, forgive me, but it has really big ears and it's kind of like a wolf fox and it smells like a skunk. And a lot of people, a lot of people say, oh, that stinks. What is that smell? And it's like, well, it's that animal. But I actually like the skunky smell. I find it kind of um, comforting Ooh, or, or soothing or something. Sorry. I find that, I'm sorry. I find that kind of, I just picked up my cat and, um, in an uncomfortable way. I'm sorry, little guy. Kisun, Kisun is my orange fluffy kitty. He's still doing well on his raw frozen meat diet, by the way. If you have a dog or a cat, I know I'm not a vet, but there's a, a naturopathic vet online named Dr. Karen Becker, and she has some really good videos on how to feed your cat raw meat diet in the proper, healthy, nutritious way that's balanced for cats and dogs for all life stages. I recommend her, Dr. Karen Becker. I, f I switched my cat overnight to a raw, um, frozen and freeze-dried 
special diet for cats and his health improved a whole bunch. So his fur, his digestion, his blood sugar, everything is improved. And he seems a lot happier and he has a lot of energy. He's about 10 years old right now. So I highly recommend it if you have a dog or a cat that's diabetic or that has its overweight or has digestive issues or skin issues or any kind of health issues. Uh, I recommend looking into switching your cat to a raw or dog to a raw meat diet. It's more natural for them. Although some cats and dogs don't really take to it right away. My cat really did right away. So he acted as if it was totally normal to eat raw meat every day. So once I switched him. Um, so thank you for listening. And I do feel again, like sometimes, uh, I, okay, I love animals. And when I'm around plants and animals, I really enjoy the smell of, of different animals when I go to the zoo. And I know a lot of people think zoos are horrible. I think that the zoos are protecting the animals. You could say that they're, you know, animals in captivity is a horrible thing. But when you look at what's happening in the world, all of the war and the bombing, you know, there's plants and animals being destroyed by war, by the habitat being chopped down by humans. And so I think of the zoo animals as it's a double edged sword that they're in captivity, but they're also being protected and they get veterinary care when they need it. And they get fed every day. And especially the baby animals that are born in zoos have a much higher survival rate than they do in the wild because there's no predators coming after them when they're at the zoo and they're cared for and they, you know, if they injure themselves or need veterinary care, they get it when they're at the zoo. So um, it's, they're a lot less stressed out, but maybe they're bored, but they're a lot less stressed out. And the zoo does try to stimulate the animals. So I go to the zoo and I enjoy the smell of the animals and the plants and now that it's spring here in Seattle, I smell all of the wonderful plants in the air and I feel really good about that. And so basically it calms me down. So I want to figure out the balance of how much socializing do I want to do. I don't have a lot of close friends, but I'm not even sure if I want close friends. I, I imagine like one or two other friends might be nice. I don't know. So I'm also going to be in a play this summer in Fremont. Forgive me, I'm all over the map. I know my, my mind is very chaotic and I'm all over the map. If anybody's actually listening, thank you for tuning in to Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. This is my podcast week number 28. And again, I'm modeling at Capital, Capital Cider tonight, April 27th, 2017, 7 to 8.30 p.m. It's free to come and draw, drink and draw. And they also have live music. So it's from 7 to 10, the whole the whole drink and draw. My part is 7 to 8.30. And then 8.30 to 10, I think, is, is live music. I'm not sure what kind. But I'll be there. And this uh, podcast is 24-7 archived on my Patreon, my YouTube, my Mixcloud. And Bandcamp only has the first 23 episodes. I don't know how to fix that issue. But all the other websites have them all. And I'll just keep doing this as long as I can. Thank you for listening. I like to share about my personal growth and I'm happy to get my blood panel tomorrow morning and make sure my blood's healthy and I might switch some of my diet and exercise routine. I'm still taking the diatomaceous earth and I'm still taking the Wellbutrin and the ashwagandha and we'll see if I want to try a mood stabilizing medication or if I want to continue doing the more natural route and only take Wellbutrin as my only medication. So thank you for listening. Now enjoy some Goddess Kring music. Winds on spiral drive. Bada boo, bada bing, stinging rings the crane. Catch the winds on spiral drive. Crack the code, left and right node. Solving the can of worms on my own. Enchanted land, smoky hands, rough and cracked 
Take this sand and stand alone, all one. I present the present, desert the desert. Exercise, bring exorcism, cleanse, cleanse. Illusion to erosion Erosion bites Fusion to explosion Fusion drives Illusion to erosion Erosion guides Fusion to explosion No thanks to the tanks of skank I reject the neglect Funnel cloud dancing loud. I want to be the center of attention. I want to be the center of attention. Pretension of invention. Straining to contain the demon. Straining, straining to contain the demon. Straining to contain the demon. Fusion draws illusion to Erosion guides fusion to explosion. Winds on spiral drive. Winds on spiral drive. Winds on spiral drive. Bada boo, bada boom, steam wins the crane. Volcano rash, a lantern green, enchanted fingers filled to rain. Winds on spiral drive. Winds on spiral drive. Fusion drives illusion to erosion. Erosion guides fusion to explosion. Guides fusion to explode.
seas, evoking seas, vice set me free, rocking the paradox, unlocking authenticity, dancing in this synchronicity, intertwined, unwinding lines of time, holding back a void dance, tuning in the tracks of what I seem to stack, persistently resisting a full life, embrace, 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 embracing this space, not running away, insight lights the way, despite fear, enjoying tantric kissing, fishing dark water self, searching through deep doubt, sailing with the bright star, you are, you are, you are, power tripper, soul ripper, cookie dough, doorknob spin, freeze where you end up, bracket back early, self-indulgent, overrate, underrate, it's all a beauty contest, their ego wounds haunt me, taunt me, dare me to express outward, shadows lit up, on and on, circling up, bloodlines of DNA, melt this away, cracked branch, ready to launch, passionate lunch, hunky dory, crunchy munchy, you teach me ancestors, I honor you, I choose you to show me, plant me, stand with me, I love and forgive you, me, we, lightning seed of green, eyes on rising steam, healing really does reveal the dreams, authentic ejaculation of my soul, molten orange liquid glow, let this truth show, rooted in youth glow, beginner's mind, loving the tide lines. This should be fashion, to be, honey, be passionate, off that tower with the flowers, bittersweet but mostly sweet, nectar life, all worth this path, a road less traveled, embrace Cut away the doubt in this drought of passion. Now with big, big, yummy honey dripping. Entreat to sensuality, spirituality, duality, non-duality. Exploring all aspects. Eucalyptus sent the wind. Eucalyptus sent the back. Let that big wheel go. Anger takes its toll. Power can the bush pricks my big toe, being rolled on that metal shelf, feeling much stamina I have. Growing in the knowing, show in the loving, embracing grace, moonshone face. Intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me, but no. Intimacy spacing me. Now know it's loving me. Tecolote Canyon, Shen, Shen Diego. Honoring clarity, exploring rarity. Seeing it's useless to be defensive, always trying to prove it. Better to be moved by it. Knowing inspiration is the station I want to be in. Limelight enjoying solitude and deep sea diving. Saving silence and soul speak. Introverted extrovert is I. Daring to share. Circle soul try. No one. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring.